Hello, environmental science scholars. Welcome to another tutorial, tutorial number three, terrestrial biomes. So take a minute and answer this question in your unit notes packet. How would you describe differences between a desert biome versus a tropical rainforest biome? Go ahead and pause that video and answer that question. So probably in your answer, you may have talked about differences in the amount of sunlight um, or amount of, you know, direct sunlight, maybe differences in precipitation levels, deserts being drier, tropical rainforests having a lot more precipitation. You may have talked or thought about differences in the types of animals, <clears throat> sorry, that can live there or can't live in certain biomes. So reminder, as a, a biome is an area of the planet that can be classified according to the plants and animals that live in it. And also looking at differences in temperature, soil, the amount of light and water or precipitation levels that that area receives. So essentially, when you answered that prompt, you may have touched on all these different things. And that is characterizing one biome from the next or differences in these different factors. Plants and animals live in certain areas of the world and is all determined by these factors right here, these different abiotic factors. So biomes are created due to the different climate zones that they're located in. So when you're looking at this map, there are essentially four major types of climate zones. And you kind of see them, you know, progress down latitudinally through Earth. You might see essentially bands of similar types of climates occurring at very similar la latitudes. And you might see them uh, kind of scattered around a little bit too. Um, so right here at the very tops and then also kind of the bottom, you know, the North Pole and then the South Pole, you have those polar climates. And so the, there are two major different types of biomes that are located here. But I'm going to collectively call them the polar climates. When you move on down, you move into what's more called temperate climates, where it might not be as cold as areas above it or as warm as areas below. It's kind of in the middle. Move on down further, get closer to the equator, you get to more of those drier, arid climates. Move on down further, right at the equator, you have those tropical climates. And then you kind of see the exact same kind of progression, but on the opposite side, on the opposite hemisphere, where you then move back into those temperate climates and then move back into those polar climates. And within that, you can see the different types of biomes that are created within that. So what is, is the difference between climate and weather first? So weather is describing the day-to-day -day atmosphere conditions in a particular location. So look outside your window right now. Is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Ho hopefully it's not snowing. That should not be happening right now during summertime. Um, but yeah, what does it look like outside? And again, that can vary from, from day to day. So if it's in wintertime, our weather will be cold and snowy. But are we like that always? No. So that's your, like your weather forecast. What's happening in the day-to-day -day basis? And it changes. The atmospheric conditions change. Climate, though, is looking at long-term trends. What's it like on average? Looking at long-term temperature and precipitation levels in a particular area. So they can measure it over a year-long period, a, you know, several year-long year period, and it should exhibit very specific trends. And so we're going to be talking about these types of graphs in this lesson that we're going to be entering into shortly. So this is looking at the average temperature in San Diego, Cal, uh, California over a year-long period. So these are average monthly trends versus precipitation levels. So you can see very specific patterns when it's really hot, you know, during summertime which is that's when it also receives the least amount of rain versus when it's cooler during winter time and that when it that's when it receives the most amount of rain. There's those climate zones again. 
So climate affects the distribution of species around the world. Animals have different adaptations to live in these different types of climate zones. You can't move a polar bear and have it live in the Sahara Desert and expect it to survive and vice versa. So what type of climate do these plants live in? How do you know? Well, that's desert. That is probably tropical rainforest. But how do you know? Same thing with, with these animals. What kind of climate do you predict them to be in? Polar, temperate, tropical, desert. How do you know? So you're looking at all those different adaptations and differences they have to live in those different climate zones. So this is probably lives in a polar climate, thick fur, white. These probably live in a more temperate climate. You know, they have fur because it can get cold, but it's not as thick as that polar bears. So terrestrial biomes, areas on land, are categorized by what are their average temperature and precipitation levels, essentially looking at what's their average climate conditions, and then also looks at very specific plant and animal species. So depending on what climate zone you live in, that determines your average temperature and precipitation level, and then that will determine the specific plant and animal species that can live in there based on their adaptations. So we're going to take a look how, at how we can graph that for a specific biome, looking at climatographs, that graph I showed you for San Diego, California. And that's what this remaining part of the lesson is looking at. So these are looking at average or graphing average temperature and precipitation levels during a particular year. And they will vary from biome to biome, depending on what kind of climate zone do you live in. So this is Alaska here, and this is India. So in red, this is the average temperature from month to month for a year-long period. Here's month on the X. Here's temperature here on the Y. So you can see how it increases, you know, during summertime and then gets really cold during wintertime. And these blue bars are the precipitation levels. On here, it measures in millimeters on the um, other Y axis. So you can see this is a very cold climate. But it does not really get much rain. Alaska, what they're looking at precipitation-wise is rain. So it actually is kind of a dry climate. It has a lot of snow, yes, but not actually very much rain. And that's what we're looking at with the precipitation levels. Versus India here, they have pretty warm temperatures. Here's on the y-axis, pretty warm temperatures that do not vary very much. It, can, it stays relatively warm all year round with very little variation. And then in the uh, blue bars, these are the precipitation levels, average precipitation levels from month to month in this year, again, measured in millimeters on the y. So look at the difference in units. Like this only goes up to 350 millimeters. India is 1,200 millimeters because this area receives a lot more rain. So this is kind of a more tropical climate, very consistent warm temperatures with a lot of precipitation. So the climatograph is actually, you know, as you can see, has a double y-axis. One of the y-axis is uh, axi or whatever huh, will, uh, will be temperature either in Celsius or Fahrenheit, depending on where you're at in the world. Um, and then precipitation levels will be in on the other axis in millimeters or in inches. And then on the x-axis will be time, usually showing months of the year. So you can see the year-long trends for that particular area. And from year to year, it typically should not change, um, but we will get into more about climate change later. Each bar represents average precipitation in that month, and then the line graph will represent the average temperature in that month. So what I want you to do is actually answer these oopsies questions in your notes. You have them in your notes. Uh, looking at these two different types of climatographs and answer these questions to try to figure out what kind of climate zone does it live in. A desert, temperate, polar, or tropical. All right, guys, that completes the end of this lesson. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And don't forget to complete your notes and answer those questions. Bye.